Have you ever tried to add six different pairs of numbers to get six different sums? No? Well, I got nothing. Imagine I've created a new two-person game and each player can have experience points, health points, and mana points. And we've got player one and player two. All right, now I'm gonna draw my little brackets around here to make it look like a matrix, right? Now, at the beginning, they've got nobody has any experience points, everybody has 10 health points, and, and uh, let's just say they start out with five mana points. Now, we've got a maximum, but you know we're not gonna worry about this. What we're gonna look at is a net gain as they're going along. So, let's assume that we have played one round and player one, well, they've gained 25 experience points. Uh, health points, in general, they've lost two. And we're looking at a net change here. So they lost two during this particular level. Mana points, they actually gained two. Now, player two, what are we looking at? Player two, well, they gained 21 experience points, lost four health points, and didn't gain any mana points. That's, this is probably me. Actually, that's probably better than me. Now, how would you come up with what their overall rating is or their overall point total is now at this point? Well, what you would do is you would take their first value for experience points, add what they gain. So zero plus 25 is 25. Zero plus 21 is 21. And then the health points, we've got 10 minus two, that's eight or 10 plus negative two. 10 plus negative four is six. Five plus two is seven. Five plus zero is five, all right? And so after one round, we've got this new total. Now let's move these values up to this new matrix. And we've got eight, six, and seven, five. New level. This time, player one gains 30 experience points, but player two only 15. Health points, player two, player one gains one, player two loses another one. And mana points, the player one, let's say they gain two more, and player two actually did something okay, got three more. Now, how do we come up with the new totals? Well, Experience, 25 plus 30, that's what, 55. Uh, 15 plus 20, that's 36. Excuse me, plus 15 plus 21. And then eight plus one is nine. Six minus one is five. And then seven plus two is nine. And five plus three is eight. All right, so enough of this silly example. What we've got is this idea of positions elements in a matrix that are being added to corresponding elements in a matrix. So notice I have this element, which is element 1, 1, right? Position 1, 1. And this element, position 1, 1, you add the same positions to get the resulting position 1, 1 in our final matrix. And so this brings about this idea of addition of matrices. So let's talk a little bit about this. First of all, whenever we add two matrices, it's really important that we know that they have the same order. In other words, we've got an M by N matrix being added to an M by N matrix. All right, the dimensions have to be exactly the same. Let's assume they're not. What are we gonna do? If I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm adding it, so I've got a three row, two column matrix, and I'm adding it to what, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, I'm adding it to a two row, three column matrix. Well, remember, what we're doing is we're adding corresponding positions. So I've got 1 plus 7, 2 plus 9. What does 11 get added to? Well, there is nothing to add it to because there's no third column in this first matrix. I'll just call this matrix A, this matrix B. And since there's nothing to add to 11, well, 
what do we do? I mean, we could just simply disregard 11, right? And end up coming up with some sort of a two by two matrix where one and seven are added, two and nine, three and eight, and four and 10. And any of the overhanging elements, we don't worry about them. No, not gonna work. Okay, so why don't we just assume there's a zero in the last column here and add 11 to zero and add 12 to zero and add five to the zero that would be in this third row of B and six to a zero. But, yeah, but what goes in this last, this last third row, third column of the result? No, what we are going to do is add an M by N to an exactly same size matrix to get an M by N result. All right. Now, just like basic arithmetic, where we're adding numbers together, there are laws that are obeyed by matrix arithmetic. For example, we have the commutative law. Now, the commutative law said A plus B is equal to B plus A. The order doesn't matter. Well, it turns out that that is true for matrices also. And it works out this way. For example, if what we've got are two matrices, three rows by two columns, we add them together in one order, we get a result. If we add exactly those same matrices together but swap the order, we get exactly the same result. The associative law. Well, the associative law in, in basic arithmetic said that A plus the sum of B plus C, in other words, we add B and C together first and then add A, it's the same as adding B and A together first and then adding C. Turns out that in matrix arithmetic, this also works. I can add matrices B and C together first and then add A, or I can add matrix A to matrix B and then add C, all right? Now remember, it doesn't matter the, the dimensions of each one of these matrices as long as all three matrices have exactly the same dimension and then our result's gonna have exactly the same dimension as those three. So let's take a look at this example again. I've got three matrices. If I add the three of them together, first adding B and C together, then adding A, I get one result. If I do exactly the same thing, adding A and B together first and then adding C, I get exactly the same result. Now in the last lesson, we talked about something called the zero matrix. And it was denoted with a zero with the M by N to show its order. Now in mathematics or in, in basic arithmetic, we have this idea that anything added to zero, the zero drops out. Anything added to zero is the original value that we were adding. Turns out the same is true in matrices. Except this time, instead of adding just a constant zero, we're adding a zero matrix. Once again, the zero matrix has to be exactly the same dimensions, the same order as the matrix we're adding it to. For example, if I have one, two, three, four, five, six in a three row, two column matrix, and I add it to zero, 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 three rows, two column matrix of zeros, then I get exactly the same thing as the original matrix A. So I've got one plus zero, and let me go ahead and put my matrix here. I've got one plus zero is one, two plus zero is two, three plus zero is three, four plus zero is four, five plus zero is five, and six plus zero is six. All right, same matrix. By the way, subtraction works too. You just have to make sure that you subtract each element of the minuend matrix from the corresponding element of the subtrahend matrix. Yeah, I always have to look those terms up too. But what we've got for an example, we've got, let's see, how about five, six, negative five, two, three, and nine. And we're subtracting, how about one, five, nine, nine, 
2, negative 10. All right. And so what we've got is 5 minus 1. That's going to be 4. 6 minus 5, that's 1. Minus 5 minus 9, that's minus 14. 2 minus 9, that's minus 7. 3 minus 2, that's 1. 9 minus a negative 10 is 19. All right, there you go.